cities now are developing in ways that are quite different from cities of 100 and 200 years ago. Cities are growing at an incredibly fast rate. 50 years ago, we had two megacities of 10 million, and right now we have 19 megacities. In another 30 years, we're adding about another 10 megacities. So the, the rate at which these cities are forming is, is very fast, it's unprecedented. Not only are these cities developing on prime agricultural land, but they're also expanding into forests and wetlands and other natural ecosystems. The development of these cities completely changes and modifies the local hydrology and the local land cover, which has huge implications for things like regional and local climate. Karen Sito is an associate professor in the urban environment at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. Her research has revealed that cities are not only affected by their environment, they shape it. Shenzhen is interesting in part because it is the place that the Chinese government focused on as the laboratory for economic policies. And so Shenzhen was the first special economic zone in all of China. And what that means is in the late 1970s, the central government of China identified Shenzhen as a place where it would test market-based policies. So over 30 years, the population of the Pearl River Delta has really exploded. You know, Shenzhen has gone from a small fishing village to one of the global manufacturing hubs, um, and certainly one of the major manufacturing hubs of China. And the population of the Pearl River Delta has gone from about 8 million um, in the early 70s, 1973, to more than 50 million today. Soaring skyscrapers are not only changing their surroundings, they're changing the climate. Cities are definitely affecting their local climate. R research on this has actually shown that cities have a big impact on their local climate through the materials that are used in cities, the use of different materials, whether it's concrete, the loss of vegetative qualities, the loss of uh, vegetative cover completely transforms the local hydrology and uh, the local climate system. Cities are shaping their environment and shaping their climate. And I think one of the big unknowns as we enter the 21st century is, on the whole, how will cities not only change their local climate, both in terms of precipitation and temperature, but how will many cities actually affect more regional and even global climate? Worldwide, cities are expected to absorb 2 billion more people by 2030. Professor Sito believes environmental sustainability is crucial to urban design. There's a huge challenge ahead in terms of providing infrastructure, energy, uh, water sanitation for all of these new urban dwellers. And at the same time, there's a huge opportunity as well uh, in terms of developing these cities in a much more sustainable way. I mean, clearly, if we look at globally, most of the CO2 emissions worldwide come from cities um, and come from urban activities. Most of the world's agricultural production goes to feed people in urban areas and people in cities. Uh, car production, uh, transportation, energy demand is by people in cities. So if we change the way we develop cities so that people can walk around for their needs and they don't have to drive, they're actually will have a huge impact potentially on energy demand, infrastructure demand, water needs, energy needs. While Professor Sito's research establishes that megacities are modifying their own environment, more research is needed to determine what role global climate change is playing in the process. And so we need significantly more research to try to understand how, as cities expand, how do they affect temperature? How do they affect precipitation? Do cities... Um, induce rainfall? Do cities create drier climates? And how does that interact with global patterns of climate change? So on the one hand, you have global climate change happening, and you have cities modifying their own climates. And there's very little understanding about how these two interact. So I think that's an area where we need a lot more research and is very, very important. For more information about the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.